Hello, welcome back to our weekly devotions. I'm Pastor David Schub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. We continue to talk about spirituality as when I talk about it kind of comes from my own studies of Mike Iaconelli's book, Messy Spirituality. But first, let's read a piece of scripture. It comes from the ninth chapter of Mark's gospel. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. John said to him, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, but he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose their reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. There's one story in Mike's book that I just love so much. It's just such a great image. This is how it goes. He writes, one of my favorite stories is about a boy named Norman in Robert Fulgham's book, Uh Uh-Oh. Remember in elementary school when the teacher would announce the spring play, every student's hand would shoot into the air volunteering to be one of the characters. Of course, the choice characters would be handed out first. In Fulgham's book, Norman's teacher announces the play for the year, Cinderella. Chaos ensues as a sea of arms waved wildly, each student trying to get the teacher's attention. I want to be Cinderella, every girl yelled. I want to be the handsome prince, the boys shouted. Realizing that not everyone could have the same part, the students soon erupted into urgent requests for other parts. I want to be the wicked stepmother. I want to be an ugly stepsister. Somehow the teacher was able to wade through all the requests, and soon everyone was assigned a part, except for Norman. Norman was a quiet young man who didn't talk much in class. He wasn't shy or bashful. He just didn't feel like talking a lot of the time. Talking about nothing was a waste of time to Norman. He talked only when he had something to say. Norman had a mind of his own and was perfectly comfortable just being himself. Concerned because there wasn't any character left, even though she had made up many extra parts, and knowing Norman very well, the teacher said, Norman... I'm afraid all the main parts have been taken for Cinderella. I'm sure we can find an extra part for you. What character would you like to be? Norman didn't hesitate. I want to be, I would like to be the pig, he declared. Pig, the teacher said, bewildered, but there is no pig in Cinderella. Norman smiled and said, there is now. Norman designed his own costume, paper cup for a nose, pink long underwear with a pipe cleaner tail. Norman's pig followed Cinderella wherever she went and became a mirror of the action on stage. If Cinderella was happy, the pig was happy. If Cinderella was sad, the pig was sad. One look at Norman and you knew the emotion of the moment. At the end of the play, when the handsome prince placed the glass slipper on Cinderella's foot and the couple hugged and ran off happily, Norman went wild with joy, danced around on his hind legs, and broke his silence by barking. In rehearsal, the teacher had tried explaining to Norman that even if there was a pig in Cinderella, pigs don't bark. But as she expected, Norman explained that this pig barked. And the barking, she had to admit, was well done. The presentation at the teacher's um, conference was a smash hit. At the curtain call, guests who received a standing ovation. Of course, Norman the Barking Pig, who was, after all, the real Cinderella story. Mike goes on to write, what I love about the story is Norman's stubbornness. Impervious to intimidation, resisting the limits of the script, Norman refused to believe he had no place. Rather than the script limiting Norman, Norman found a way to enhance the script. 
to fill it full of life and laughter and surprise. Norman was so like Jesus. The religious leaders of the day had written the script for the Messiah. When Jesus announced he was the Messiah, the Pharisees and others screamed at him, there is no Jesus in the Messiah script. Messiahs do not hang out with losers. Our Messiah does not break all rules. Our Messiah does not question our leadership or threaten our religion or act so irresponsibly. Our Messiah does not disregard his reputation, befriend riffraff, or frequent the hangouts of questionable people. Jesus replied, this Messiah does. In our spirituality, we're often trying to get to a specific place, a place of holiness, a place of certainty, that moving that place where we know that God is just right there and wants us to be. We try to follow a certain formula so that we do it right. Well, what right way is there? God wants more than anything for us to be free, to be the free, free to be the people we are meant to be. The disciples are, or I mean the Pharisees are quick to say, Jesus isn't doing it right. But what's the right way to approach the Messiah? In my walk with God, in my moments, in the presence of the Lord, what I seek more than anything is a love that will set me free to be what I am meant to be. I want to find joy in my life. I want to sing and dance before God. I want to be touched by the love that says, Dave, I love you just the way you are, and I will rejoice as you grow in what you are meant to be. And there's no right way to get there. I think Mike is trying to remind us that spirituality is freedom to be. To be whatever we see God has made us to be. And then to go into the world and set others free to find joy in who they are. Are there people who find God as they share in the traditional liturgies of the church? Well, then thanks be to God for that. Are there people who meet Jesus in rock songs and country and jazz and love innovative new styles of prayer? Well, thank God for that. Are there people who sing and dance and clap as they uplift the Messiah? Then thanks God for that. Are there people who meet God in moments of silence and seriousness? Then thank God for that. Are there those who find God in service to others in places that others don't want to go? Well, then thanks God, thank God for that. Do you have your own way you approach the God of love? Then thank God for that. However we worship, however we pray, however we walk with God, thank God for that. That is spirituality. Let us pray. Come, Lord, and let us know that you love us as we are and will lead us to where we are meant to be along roads that none of us expect. Amen.